Imagine a powerful computer only uh, about five or six inches thin and like 18 inches long. It would be a technological breakthrough of incredible proportions. Imagine it could run uh, at least a couple programs to help your kids get ahead in school and to help you get ahead in business. The new JDH-8. It's now a figment of reality. Oh, all right. Yeah, it probably won't help your kids or your business or whatever, and it sure as shit isn't a technological breakthrough of incredible proportions. But it's here, it works, and this is a little bit about how I did it. So in case you aren't caught up from either of my previous videos, let me just really quickly answer the question, what the hell are you doing for you? Well, what I'm doing here, and what I've been up to for the past few months, is building an 8-bit TTL mini computer with a 16-bit address bus, 256 I.O. ports, a 208 by 240 pixel black and white composite signal generated graphics card, and writing some programs for it. Oh, and the whole thing is going to be made out of these tiny little integrated circuits wired together by hand on breadboards. Now, while that might sound kind of complicated, the computer is actually pretty simple and only has 16 instructions, but it needs to be able to do them exactly right every time. Here you can see the instructions the computer can execute, including these two which store and load data from memory, this instruction which moves data into registers, the standard push and pop instructions for the stack, these seven instructions that perform arithmetic operations, two instructions for I.O., and the all-important jump instruction. Pretty simple, right? Not that much to do? Well, well, we'll see about that. So, well now with the targets defined, how did I even get started on this thing? Well, let's go over to the initial design for my first video on this project, which you should check out if you haven't seen, and see how this actually gets implemented. So the original circuit existed in Logisim and was made up of these fancy logic symbols and nice looking circuits. This unfortunately isn't enough to get started on a build, before any wiring can happen, the entire circuit needs to be converted into this format where the logic is segmented among different integrated circuits so they can actually be wired together on breadboards. These are all the 74 series integrated circuits designed by Texas Instruments. This conversion is absolutely not one-to-one -one, and a lot of the modules had signals changed, inverted, and or simplified in the process. And once the whole thing was converted, I made this nice looking and relatively easy to follow master schematic for the whole thing. Unfortunately, you can't really get any of the fine details over video, so if you really want to go see this, check out the GitHub link in the description below. All this stuff took a while, but after all that was done though, I could procure the chips to make the computer, slap them down on some breadboards, and get started wiring them together. And since it would be kind of insane to build the whole thing at once, the computer was wired first as nine independent and individually testable modules, which were the video generator up here, which operates nearly independently of the rest of the computer, yet only communicates via the video memory placed here, the address module, which computes the current memory address, the arithmetic logic unit or ALU, which does all the math for the computer, the auxiliary registers or oxregs module which contains the memory mapped registers those being the stack pointer the program counter and the memory bank register then we have the device interface module for device io the operation counter or opsi module which keeps track of and loads the current instruction the register file which sits up here and contains our eight general purpose registers then all this miscellaneous stuff including the clock and system rom and ram and finally, the control signals. This consists of some EEPROMs containing the computer's microcode, which can change the control lines depending on the current instruction. This is kind of the glue where the whole computer comes together. With all those hopefully simple, easy to understand modules in order though, the video card was actually already built. So when I started work on the rest of the computer, there were just eight modules to wire. Easy peasy. And using this module building strategy, I got started on a stream in early September on the ALU. So what are you doing to the circuit today? Um, I'm going to be building the first part of the arithmetic logic unit or ALU. Okay. 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 It's circuit time. Uh, boys, girls, and NBs. Um, we're going to, we're going to build this. Make it rainbow. Yeah. I wish you guys could, sorry. You guys get to pick from the bad colors. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hook this up again and then see.
Okay, nope, never mind, it's back. Okay, I guess that's what happens when you short, um... Why is this being shorted? Oh, that's why. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was just shorting all of my USB devices. Sorry about that. No, the short had nothing to do with resistors. It had nothing to do with resistors. It had to do with the fact that I took a power and ground wire and went like this with them. One plus four does equal zero if you're operating in uh, mod five arithmetic, but uh, unfortunately, uh, that is not what we're doing. Okay, now that it's clocked in there, now we take the enable low for X. Then we clock four into Y, take the enable high for Y, and there we go, it's five. One plus four is indeed five, right? And well, from that, you can kind of guess how the rest of this build went. If it took me three hours to build that little bit on a stream, and there are nearly 30 boards with four to six chips each on them, then, well, it took about two and a half whole work weeks to finish the thing. That's not even mentioning debugging. And well, that's kind of just what the whole process looked like. First, I would measure some wires, then I'd clip them, then I'd wire things together until each module was constructed corresponding to the schematic. And you can enjoy some nice wiring time lapses, but obviously this isn't everything that happened. All the modules were individually tested, of course, before being wired together, but I don't really have any footage of that because you can only use so much time in a video on just wiring time lapses. But eventually, after everything was wired, it was time to test. I'm going to hook it up to power uh, for the first time and see if anything short circuits or explodes or catches on fire. And test. Uh, kind of works. Kind of works. Um... But eventually, in spite of the jankiness of my testing setup, I was able to be reasonably sure that most of the instructions were working, and so it was time to attempt to bring the computer up and have it run its first real program. This took a lot of attempts. The test program is going to display hi and then a smiley face up in the top left corner if it works. This is the test number two of my fully custom hand-wired mini computer. This chip right here, it's a 74244 and it should be a 74573. They have completely different pinouts. It's really, uh, really fucking things up, for lack of a better term. Okay, um, it's like 2 a.m. This is test number 10. But eventually it worked, which you'll know if you saw my last video. It is, uh, 2.30, Monday morning. I am, uh, this is attempt like number 20 something of trying to get this thing to run. And it's going to take a uh, program that's loaded onto this EEPROM, which copies the bytes that spell out hi, smiley face, onto the left ish middle of the screen. If it works, the whole, the whole computer is functioning. I'm gonna hook it up to uh, to an Arduino for power and for the uh, clock signal, and uh, let's give it a go. I'll just give it the fast clock. I think it's working. There we go. Hi, smiley face up in the top right. Oh my God, holy fuck, it works. It finally finally works. After that, I was able to run a full test suite on the computer that shows failure visually using the graphics card, and I could get all the functionality of the computer tested. It was actually pretty easy since the machine can only do 16 different instructions, but 16 different instructions with two different operating modes across eight different registers and three separate memory regions leads to a lot of stuff to test. But with all that in order though, it was about time to get some more interesting software working on it, I thought. First I got this graphics test program running, but I wanted to try something more interesting. 
and unfortunately I didn't have time to connect any input devices before this video, but I thought it would be fun to give a nice little winter themed proof of computation with this program that copies a black and white picture of Santa flying over a landscape, pulled in his sleigh by some reindeer, and then computes the 10th Fibonacci number and throws it up on the screen in binary. So now that we have a computer, like any good project post-mortem, let's ask ourselves, what went wrong? Well, maybe we should be asking what did not go wrong. This thing is full of poor design decisions, so in order of increasing severity. Number one, the GPU is designed around comparators that trigger SR latches in order to generate pulses of a specific length. These should have been monostables, but I didn't know monostables existed at the time that I designed it. Number two, IO should have been memory mapped. Dedicating two instructions to it was silly. Number three, a stack is fine in a non-multitasking computer. It sure is useful, but it was not worth the added complexity at all of the extra auxiliary registers, the extra address calculations. The stack should have been in software. Number four, the ALU was over-engineered and could have been replaced by a single chip. This one. It took me two and a half days to wire and test, and it would have had more functionality if I had just used this chip and I didn't make it myself. And finally, number five, the worst sin of all, and this one will take some explaining. Okay, so in most computers, access out to memory will be slower than processing data in a register. This is why we have caches, machines with lots of registers, things like that to kind of like mitigate that slowness. That is, however, absolutely not the case for this computer. Computers with lots of registers that take only register arguments for most operations are called load store architectures, and that's how I designed my computer. However, in this computer, memory access is like a 20th of a cycle. It makes absolutely no sense that the computer has eight registers. Like zero, it should have had four registers, an accumulator, a program counter, and flags. Maybe not even the flags register, but everything else should come from memory. This is by far the worst design decision of this whole project. But in spite of these issues, regardless of their severity, it all works. And that is what counts. So if you want to know more about the precise details of the build, I've made an hour-ish long lecture style video that's me explaining sort of off the cuff how the whole thing works if that's something you're interested in. The link is down in the description. But please enjoy this program to see you off running in beautiful black and white composite pixel graphics from a fully functional, handmade, and wired 8-bit mini computer. Oh, also, I'm going to be laying off the hardware for a while now. This project took me a little while, but I think it's going to be back to software on my channel for now. We might even see a return to game dev, but no promises. As always, thank you very much for watching and following me throughout the duration of this project. See you in my next video.